lesson is on integration and differentiation of the natural exponential function. We spent some time in the last couple lessons working with the natural logarithmic function, integration and differentiation. Then we just spent the last lesson working on inverse functions and the calculus involved with that. Now we're going to take the inverse of the natural log function, which is e to the x, the natural exponential function, and we're going to work with the calculus of that. So, the derivative of the natural exponential function, derivative of e to the x, is actually e to the x. So if y equals e to the x, y prime equals e to the x. That's one of the reasons, that's one of the great characteristics of this number e, that its derivative is actually its y value. The rate it's changing is the value of the function at that x point. So that, that's one of the ways that e is defined. Its derivative, the derivative of e to the x, is e to the x. And then the chain rule, derivative with respect to x of e to the u, is e to the u times the derivative of the exponent. So e to the u, u prime. All right. So you bring down e to the u exactly the same, and then multiply at the end by the derivative of the exponent, similar to trig functions. You derive, you know, the derivative of cosine is negative sine at the same angle, then at the end you have the derivative of the angle. So the exponent's going to stay the same as you go down, as you derive. So if we have y equals e to the 2x to the 5th plus 7, to derive that, you're going to take the same exact thing. y prime will be e to the 2x to the 5th plus 7 times the derivative of that exponent. So it's 2x to the 5th plus 7 times 10x to the 4th. So a lot of times you write the x term in front. Order doesn't really matter too much. Again, all the old rules of differentiation, uh, first derivative, second derivative, extrema, critical numbers, relative max, relative min, increasing, decreasing, all of those old rules still apply. We just have another type of function that we can derive now. So we want to find the relative extrema of f of x equals x times e to the x. So the first thing we want to do is derive this. Relative extrema happen at critical numbers. So we want to derive this and set it equal to zero. X e to the x is a product, so we want to use the product rule. First times derivative of the second, x times the derivative of e to the x, which is still e to the x. So x e to the x plus second times derivative of the first, e to the x times the derivative of x, which is one. So you get x e to the x plus e to the x. We're going to factor out. Remember, we're going to set something equal to zero. You always want to get in as many factors as possible. So we factor out e to the x from both terms. You get f prime of x equals e to the x times x plus 1. Well, e to the x can never equal 0. 2.7 to some power can never be 0. So e to the x won't equal 0, so this factor never equals 0. x plus 1 can equal 0. Happens that x equals negative 1. So our only critical number is x equals negative 1. Now we have our critical number. Now we make a sign chart to see. Use the first derivative test. Is it increasing then decreasing? decreasing and increasing, or staying the same. You test before negative 1, you plug in negative 2. Well, e to the x is always a positive number. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative, so we get a negative derivative here, meaning the function is going down, is decreasing. Plug in a number after negative 1, plug in 2. e squared is positive, e to whatever is always positive. 2 plus 1 is positive, so the function is, <coughs> sorry, the derivative is positive uh, greater than negative 1, so the function is increasing. Greater than negative 1, function's going down, then it's coming back up, so you must have a relative minimum at the point x equals negative 1. Now, integrating the natural exponential function. Well, the antiderivative of e to the x with respect to x is e to the x plus c. The derivative is e to the x, the antiderivative is e to the x. And again, our chain rule, the derivative, I'm sorry, the antiderivative or the indefinite integral of e to the u du is e to the u plus c. <clears throat> so we want to integrate e to the 5x minus 3 with respect to x. First thing, use your u substitution. u is going to be the exponent here, 5x minus 3. du will be 5. Derive this, you get 5 dx. 
So I have e to the u, and I have a dx. So I want to divide both sides by 5. So 1 fifth du is the same as dx. So I'm going to take the indefinite integral of 1 fifth e to the u du. anti interrogative I get 1 fifth e to the u plus c. Back substitute e to the 5x minus 3 over 5 plus c. You could have wrote this as 1 fifth e to the 5x minus 3. Again, notation doesn't really matter as long as it's, uh, as long as it's equivalent. Another one that's uh, sometimes a little bit tricky. The integral of e to the 1 over x over x squared with respect to x. A lot of times, or the majority of the times, you see the something other than x. And if you're going to use u substitution, if you're looking to integrate, you're going to want to try or look to see if u equaling the exponent will help. So let u equal the exponent. 1 over x, the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared dx. So, e to the u, 1 over x squared dx. So, I have e to the u, I'm left with 1 over x squared dx. du is negative 1 over x squared dx, so I put a negative over here. Negative du is positive 1 over x squared dx. Now I can rewrite this integral in terms of u. The integral of negative e to the u du equals negative e to the u plus c, which equals negative e to the 1 over x plus c. And again, um, indefinite integrals, definite integrals, all the same. We just now have more rules to use. So we can anti-derive and find the area of the curve of more functions. So we have the indefinite integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x over 1 plus e to the x, all with respect to x. So we look here. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any simplification we can do. So the first thing you want to do is um, look and see. It's irrational. Is a denominator to a power of 1? This whole denominator is to the first power. So we might want to try to use some logarithmic uh, integration and let u equal the denominator. u equals 1 plus e to the x du is e to the x, dx. So this is 1 over u, du. e to the x, dx is du. 1 plus e to the x is u, so it's du over u. So the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over u, du, is the natural law of the absolute value of u, which is the natural law of the absolute value of 1 plus e to the x, and use the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate and find the value of this definite integral. Um, plug in 1, natural log of 1 plus e to the first, which is just e, minus natural log of 1 plus e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1, so it's natural log of 1 plus 1, which is 2. Careful here, when you have exponents, 0 doesn't wipe things out. A lot of, a lot of students will go through this pretty quick and make the mistake of saying this is the natural log of 1 here because you're plugging in 0. E to the 0 is not 0. E to the 0 is 1. So be careful when you plug in the zeros. Uh, think it through, especially when you're using logarithms or exponential equations. So down here we have natural log of 1 plus e minus natural log of 2. Um, we actually never really needed the absolute value signs here. 1 plus e to the x, e to the x will never be a negative number. Adding 1 to it will always keep it, you know, will still keep it positive. So you don't have to have the absolute value signs here. I don't have them down here. Uh, it depends on, on the test, on the question, on the homework assignment, on the teacher, on the textbook, on wherever you're getting the problems from. Uh, a lot of them will ask you to leave it like this. Natural log of 1 plus e minus natural log of 2. Or they might put it as natural log of 1 plus e over 2 using logs of, or rules of logarithms. Some of them will ask you for an estimate, and you just use your calculator to find that. If they want the exact answer, you leave it like this. So that's a natural exponential function. A lot of real world problems are written using the natural exponential function. All right? A lot of application problems that you'll see in your textbooks and on tests, and especially on the AP test. Uh, e to the x is a very common function to use in modeling situations that arise in real world problems. 
So this is a, a very important section. Uh, so make sure you really focus on, on understanding this and, and becoming good with both integrating and deriving natural exponential functions.